color management in Corel Draw is an extremely important topic. It can change what you see on screen and it can also change the way colors are output. So you want to get the correct settings and the important thing is to get the correct default settings. So we're going to look at those settings. You need to select Tools, Color Management, Default Settings. And the good news is you really only need to do this one time right after you install Corel Draw. Once you've got them set, these defaults control every file you create. So at the very top, we have a list of presets that either you have saved or those that came with Corel Draw. And everything here are ones that did get supplied with Corel Draw. You'll see I have custom selected because I've chosen my own settings. There are several here that are labeled with Europe, Japan, and North America and you'll also see a minimal color management and probably the two that you may want to look at simulate color management off and simulate Corel Draw Graphics Suite X4. Keep in mind that any Corel Draw file created in Corel Draw X4 or earlier does not have embedded color management information. Therefore, when you bring it into Corel Draw X6, you very well could see a color shift because now that color management is included. If you had the color management setting off in your earlier versions of Corel Draw, this profile may get your files to look as close as possible to those earlier files. That doesn't make it right. So if you can live with a little bit of a color shift as you move forward to Corel Draw X6, in the long run you're better off not using this. The same is true as the Simulate Corel Draw Graphics Suite X4. Yes, it may look make your files look more like Corel Draw X4 both on screen and output. But in the long run, you're better off not using it if you can live with some color shifting to a more accurate profile. So now let's go through here. Each file has three profiles associated with it. One for RGB, one for CMYK, and one for grayscale. I talked about these in detail in the PDF file, so I'll let you read through there to determine which profile is best for your needs. And I also gave you some suggestions for different workflows, such as those of you doing wide format printing or laser engraving or even just regular old desktop printing on an inkjet or a laser. What is your primary color mode? Unless you are outputting to a printing press, you'll probably want RGB. It is the best for most workflows. Even those of you going to a press may find RGB is better for you. Your only choices are RGB or CMYK. And many people go with CMYK even though it is not the best choice. The rendering intent. I showed you examples of all of these in the PDF file and I suggest you use Perceptual. The next setting are the color engines and the color engines you see are dependent on what operating system you use and did you install the Adobe color management system or not. You'll see I have four. There are two of them labeled Microsoft. If you are on Vista or above, you will see the WCS and that would be my choice if you're not needing to match Adobe products. If your whole goal is to match what you get in Adobe products, then you'll want to install the Adobe profile. Now keep in mind, you got to download that to install it, so that's why you don't see it on my system. Preserve Pure Black can be useful if you have pure CMYK black that needs to be converted to pure RGB black or vice versa. It can wreak havoc if you have grayscales, so I currently have it off. If there are grays in your file, they will be mapped to the K channel of CMYK. Spot color in earlier versions defaulted to the CMYK definitions. 
they aren't as accurate as using lab values. But if you need to match what they were before, you'll want to change this to CMYK. And then over here, you'll see the policies when you either open files or import and paste files. Remember I said that CorelDRAW X4 and earlier files don't have color profiles? Well, if you open one, what profile is going to be used? And it says use embedded. Well, there isn't one embedded. So it's going to default to whatever you have here. Now it also says warn on missing. Well, that means every single file you open, if it's one of those older files, is going to warn you. That might get annoying, so I keep that turned off. When importing and pasting, you can also choose how these are going to be handled. With all of these choices, you can either assign a different profile, you can have it converted, which probably means a color shift, or you can use whatever is embedded. So choose these carefully, and I talk more about this in the PDF file. Once you've got these set up, and it should take you five minutes at most to get them set up, you really don't need to think about them a lot more. So just say OK, and now every new file you create will get those settings. And you'll learn in the next part how we can change those on a document-by-document -document basis.